so let's say you want to have some AI for your character, but you like C++. Well, <clears throat> that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to take all of this code right here, this stuff, and we're going to put it into C++ instead of blueprints. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so what we want to do is go ahead and just make a simple find a random point in a navigable radius and move our character to that, our little AI Goombas here, whatever you want to call them, doofus, something like that. So in order to start with that, we want to give our characters an AI controller. So we're going to go to new C++ class, we're going to search for AI controller. We're going to call this Hopper AI controller. And put this in public core AI. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Okay, so here we are in our C++ class, our new AI controller. We're going to add some stuff in here. We're going to need a constructor. And we're going to need a protected section where we do our begin play, not begin destroy, begin play, not that either. What is going on? Begin play override. Thank you. We also want an on possess override. And then a private section. And in this private section is where we're going to put our components, such as our behavior tree, our blackboard component, and then we also need the actual behavior tree. So we're going to do a U property, edit defaults only, blueprint read write, category equals AI that in a string thingy and then because this is the private section we need to allow private access equals true okay and this is going to be a t object pointer to a u behavior tree called behavior tree next we're going to do a u property you know what i'll just copy this line paste it and this is going to be edit instance only. And we can make this just blueprint read only as well. And this is going to be a component. And this is our U behavior tree component called behavior tree component. And I'm going to do a forward declaration of this guy. And then we're going to take that same header, put it here. Actually, this should just be visible anywhere. And visible anywhere. All right, so T object pointer again to a U blackboard component. And this is our blackboard component. All right, that is all we need for the header file. Let's go over to the implementation. In our con uh, constructor, we have to do our little standard thing here where we create default sub objects of the behavior tree component and we'll call it behavior tree component. And whoops, what's going on here? Oh, it did that thing. Sometimes writer can detect when you're at the end of a line other times it cannot. Blackboard component create a default sub object of U blackboard component. And we'll call this blackboard component. And this is going to need an actual header and not just the forward declaration. Okay, in begin play, we're going to first check to make sure that our behavior tree is valid. So we're going to get that pointer out of the T object pointer and we need to make sure that we have behavior tree up here added otherwise you're going to get a little red squiggly. And if it is valid, if we have set the behavior tree in the blueprint, we're going to run the behavior tree and we're going to give it behavior tree and the pointer out of the object pointer. So once we've done that, we take the behavior tree component and we start the tree. And this is going to be 
to the pointer and we're dereferencing the pointer so that we get an actual reference to the behavior tree. When our AI controller possesses our pawn, we also want to do another check. We're going to check if our blackboard is valid and we're going to check once again if the behavior tree is valid. If those are both valid, we're going to take the blackboard and we're going to initialize the blackboard and we're going to pass again a dereference to the behavior tree and the blackboard the blackboard asset. And I believe that is also a t-object pointer these days. You don't have to have the dot get, and if you're using Rider, you'll get this little symbol where it is uh, converting it over to a pointer, but you can do the dot get to do it yourself. It's, a, I believe, an implicit conversion. Um, this is an explicit conversion. Okay, that is pretty much it for our AI controller. I want to go over here, though, and just make sure that something is activated. Okay, so we have our AI module, but there's one more thing that we're going to want to put in here. Navigation system. Navigation system. Because we're going to use the nav mesh in order to move our little character around. Okay, we are back in the editor. I'm going to go to blueprints, core, and I'm going to make a blueprint class off of our AI controller. So this is our BP hopper AI controller. So we want to go over to AI and these are my original blueprint AIs so I'm going to put those into a folder because we're not going to use them anymore. And we're going to make some new stuff here, artificial intelligence. We're going to do a blackboard so a BB enemy and a behavior tree BT enemy. Okay. Go back to your Hopper AI controller, the blueprint one. Go over to AI, the behavior tree. Set it to our enemy, our new one. Okay, once you've set the behavior tree over here to our new one, let's go back over to AI to our behavior tree enemy. And the blackboard asset, we don't want to use that old one, we want to use the new one. So now we're using a blackboard, uh, our a new blackboard enemy with our behavior tree. So these are going to be utilizing our C++ class. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take this blueprint, uh, this task here, and we're going to rewrite it all in C++. So go up to Tools, New C++ Class, and the class that we're going to look for is BT Task Blackboard Base. Let's make one of those. So this is going to be called Hopper... What do we want to call it? Hopper BT task um, find random location. Let's do that. And we're going to put it in public core AI, and then I'm going to make another folder called tasks. Okay, first things first, I'm going to put a little comment here, BT task for finding a random location on a nav mesh. There we go. Now we want to do our constructor as usual, you hopper bt task, find random location. And then in a private section here, we're going to grab execute task, which is an override, and get static description override. I will explain what that does in a minute. It's pretty cool. All right, so now we want to have a u property for edit anywhere, blueprint read write, Category equals search, and we'll do the meta equals allow private, whoops, that needs to be in there, allow private access equals true. All right, so this is going to be our search radius. That way we can set it whatever we want in the game. So I'm going to set it to 500 just for default. Okay, we are in the implementation. First, let's give our node a name. This is what we see on the little blueprint node. We're gonna call it find random location. That's what this is going to be named as. Now we're gonna go down to our execute. This is the logic that we created in the blueprints. This is where we're going to find the location, pass it, and store it as a vector. So. 
We're going to want a nav location called location and we'll do an empty initializer. First we're going to get the AI pawn. So we want to grab the AI controller which is the owner component get AI owner. So we've now grabbed the AI controller off of the owner component which is one of the parameters coming into execute. Uh, now we want to grab a pawn off of that controller. And you know what? Because this is modern C++, what I'm going to do is put these in initializer lists. Yeah, there's some modern C++ for you. Alright, we're going to get the pawn origin here, and it's going to be a const f vector called origin, and we will set it to AI pawn get actor lo whoop, actor location. All right, so now we have the pawn, we have the pawn's origin. Now we want to obtain the navigation system and find a random location. So we're going to grab a U navigation system V1. I don't know what the difference is between U navigation system and a navigation system V1. So nav system, that's what we'll call it, and that is going to be set to U navigation system v1 static get current get world. Sweet, we now have the nav system. Now we're going to check, is that nav system valid? And then we're going to grab off of it a get random point and navigable radius. Now this wants a couple of parameters. It wants the starting, so that is our origin. We're going to send it our search radius, the location, where we're going to store it. Alright, so now location has our random point. That's an if statement. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to grab our AI controller, we're going to yank the blackboard component off of it. We're going to set value as vector. You may remember that from the blueprints. That's what we call the little blu blueprint node. We're setting a value as a vector. So this vector is our location. So what we want to do here <clears throat> is we want to grab the blackboard key, which is the, the, uh, the variable, the blackboard key selector. You may have seen this when you do AI. It's the blue symbol. Um, this is, it's, it is a vector, but it's a Blackboard key selector. The selected key name, and we're gonna pass it location, the location off the location. All right, so we've set value as vector. Now we need to signal the behavior tree component that the task finished with a success. We're going to finish the latent task, that's the call. We're going to pass in the owner component. I don't need those extra parentheses, Ryder. Thank you. And we're going to pass in an EBT node result succeeded, that enum. And then we actually need to return it, so EBT node result succeeded. I don't need that parentheses. Okay, so this is the finished execution and this is the return. So you need to, this signals, if we go take a look at it, this calls the task finish. This finishes the actual task, so you need to have this finished latent task call. This Blackboard key right here, we want to accept only vectors because that's what this that's what this uh, this node, this task, wants. It wouldn't make any sense if you send it a bool or an integer. So the Blackboard key, we're going to add a vector filter. This is the owner. And then we're going to do a, um, an assertion here, get member name checked. So it is U hopper BT task find random location. And then we pass in the Blackboard key. So what this is doing is it's filtering on our node, the Blackboard key, we only want to filter for vectors. Only a vector can be added to this task to be filled 
here at this value down here. Okay, now for the cool part, this get static description. What this does is it sets up on the node, on the little blueprint node, um, the actual variable underline. Without this, you don't actually see the... I don't know how to call it. I'll point it out when we get to the editor. But what we want to do here is return an f string. We're going to print f from a text uh, macro. We're going to do vector and then the string. And that string comes from um, that string comes from blackboard key dot selected key name to string. All right. So that's going to print out this vector and then the name of the vector, the vector that we gave it. And I'll show it when we get back to the editor, so let's compile. Okay, we're back in the editor. So let's go into our BT enemy. Here we are. Let's go to the blackboard first. We're going to add a vector and we're going to call this our target location. Alright, and it is of type vector, that's important. So we're going to drop down here and we're going to go to a selector and then we're going to go to a sequence. The sequence will run in order. So here, right here, our BT task simple find random location. That's my original blueprint. I'm not going to get that. Here's find random location. And that is the title, the, the name that we gave it. And now you can see this is what I was talking about. This little underline right here. Vector and target location. See that? That is what we did right there for the description. Without that function call, that would be gone and you would only see the title. However, if you take a look at move to, which is what we're going to do next, it also has that little underline. So I went and I looked through many different classes until I finally found how to create that. Because without it, it just felt bare. It didn't feel like a uh, professional looking blueprint node that, un that Epic made. So that's why I added that. So we're going to move, by the way, this move to, we're going to move to the target location, and then we're going to wait, and how about, f yeah, five seconds, but we're going to do a random deviation of two seconds in there. So there we go. Now check this out. Remember how we filtered? If I make a Boolean right here, and I go back to the behavior tree, and our find random location, it doesn't show up only target location shows up. That's because we filtered for vectors. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Okay, now in our hopper enemy, our base enemy class here, we want to find our AI. So we need to go down and find our AI. Here it is, AI controller class. Set that to the BP hopper AI controller. Make sure it is the blueprint one, because the blueprint one is where we have our behavior tree set up. If we do not use that one, you will get no behavior tree, because the C++ doesn't know where that is. Okay, now once we have selected our AI controller class, we need to do one more thing. I have this guy here that says run that behavior tree simple AI. I want to disconnect that, delete that, because... We are not doing that anymore. We don't actually need that either. Let's go ahead and hit play. And there we go. All of our AI is utilizing our C++ and moving around within a 500, I think, centimeter, so 5 meter radius. I think that's what they're doing. Random location in 5 meters. Yep. And they're waiting uh, about three seconds, give or take two. So there's how to make a custom C++ task and run it in the editor. What else could you ask for? I don't know. How about the bad guys attacking? We'll try and tackle that next time. Bye.